A horse, well, in this case, a pony, walks into a bar for his regular sip of Guinness. The barman asks why the long face, and if he could talk, the horse would probably say, well, because I can't come here much longer. So Patrick is um, a massive hit with the locals. Um, he comes into his local pub, the Drum Inn, and there's lots and lots of people that come and see him every day um, up at the stable yard. He brings so much joy to people. Patrick loves to come into the pub and um, everybody loves to see him and it's really good for his therapy training because he's getting used to all the sounds and all the different people and all the different noises. And um, he has a bit of Guinness because it's actually really good for horses. It's high in iron, which is really good for them. Also, a lot of working horses, race horses, often have Guinness put into their feed. So we have three horses. One's called Annie, one's called Cowboy, and we have little Patrick. And um, basically, at the end of September, um, we have to move our horses into winter grazing fields, which are inadequate. Basically, all the fencing's rotted, you've got low barbed wire, you've got bracken and brambles, so there's nothing for the horses to graze. And, um, and it's um, about, I would say, about half a mile from the stables. We've raised concerns over the fields for a long time, and they've, over the time they've deteriorated due to the weather conditions. Had a veterinary report, a vet has said that the horses um, it's not advisable for them to go into this field because there's high risk of injury. Well, almost 4,000 people have now signed a petition calling for Patrick and, of course, the horse-drawn carriage business to remain in this picturesque village here. I've spoken to Torbay Council, the Torbay Development Agency, and also the Torbay Coast and Countryside Trust who helped to oversee this village. They say they do want to keep the business here, but between them they still haven't found a solution and it seems time is running out. I'm a sister-in-law of Rick Passmore, who was well known in this area, Mr Coffington. He was so well known, he's got a plaque down the ford. Rick was doing the horse and carriages till 2013. Um, and all these same problems were occurring the 20 years previous. Um, unsuitable fields. Uh, mainly, nothing was acceptable for, for the horse's well, well-being. Um, and he had to fight and fight, and it had the same devastating effect on, on Rick, emotionally, psychology, you know. He was just devastated that it was a fight every day of his life to keep the horse and carriage in Coffington. I remain optimistic, uh, but we are getting to the wire on this, and, and, and I'm very concerned that we're going to get to a position where it will be too late by accident. And I really do want the council uh, and the leadership of the council to, to get, get round the table and find a solution. Uh, you know, we've been contacted by many thousands of local residents. This council is always saying that uh, they are listening to the, to the, uh, to the general population, uh, the residents. So I say to Councillor Darling, please step in and sort this out before it's too late. I'm also confused by who do we contact? And there's three points of contact which I found very difficult. There's the TDA, there's the Countryside Trust, and there's the council itself. And uh, even though I've been a, a, a councillor for a little while now, even I'm confused about who do I actually talk to? Because each different department seems to be dealing with a different part of the problem. Uh, and we just need one person to make the decision. And I think that should be you know, the, the leader of the council.